Now I've got a new pattern for you today. There's no history really on this thing because it's a pretty new pattern. But it was created by a lady named Ruth Zink from Alberta, Canada. Now Ruth is a pretty accomplished tire. She's been a senior VP for Canada on the Wilderness Risk Management Conference for 10 years. She's been a member of the Women's Fly Fishing Association of Alberta, and she was their Fly Tire of the Year in 1998. Now she created this pattern called the Royal Lady for breast cancer awareness. So the colors on it are kind of significant. You've got the black for remembrance and the pink for survival and then the white for hope. So I think it's a pretty cool, pretty special pattern. It's not at all hard to tie. There are no exotic materials. You've got some calf tail for the tail, black ostrich for the body, a little bit of pink floss and then white hackle up front. And it's tied pretty much like a generic mayfly pattern, but in these colors, I'd pretty much call it a, an attractor fly. And this is one, I think you could tie it really elegantly and it would be a nice fly for a shadow box, maybe for a gift. But there's nothing wrong with tying this thing just to fish. I'm gonna do that and I think it's gonna work just fine. So it's a pretty cool, I think a very elegant pattern. I think you're gonna like it. So there it is, the Royal Lady. I think it's a pretty cool looking, elegant little pattern. Not a whole lot to it and not all that complicated. Now the pattern does say size 10 to 16. I'm gonna tie it on a size 12. This is a 1x long dry fly hook. And I'm gonna lay down a base of white thread to the start of the bend. This is a 70 denier. And the tail is calf tail, white calf tail, which if you've ever tried to stack that, you'll know it's not the easiest thing to stack. One tip, if you do wanna stack it, you can't use a whole lot and put it in the widest stacker you have. So let's see if this stacked okay right here. It did a little bit right there. That looks a little bit more even than if we didn't stack it at all. So let's try to catch this in. And the only picture of this one I've seen, it is a pretty long tail. It's a pretty significant tail. So I think we're gonna be fine with that right there. Let's go about a body length. And I'm gonna catch that. Let's go a little bit farther back right there. Okay, I'm gonna do, let's see, three wraps. Take a look at it. Okay, that's what I want right there, but I'm also gonna put a wrap under it just to keep it from spinning around. Okay, now we should be locked in pretty good. And I'm gonna leave this front part. I'm gonna put some loose wraps right here. What this is doing is giving me a little bit of bulk, but mainly it's getting the, keeping the white for the underbody because with the pink floss we're gonna be using, the white underbody will help it stay pink. So let's take that up right there, put a couple tight wraps and snip off all this. Well, that was a little messier than I thought, but let's go ahead and bind this in and take our thread back to where we're gonna catch in the rear part of the body. And it's a three-part body. The back part, I guess the butt, is black ostrich hurl. So I'm gonna catch in, I, I've got about a four or five inch hurl here. I'm just gonna catch it in right there. And I'm gonna wrap it to about where my thread is. Believe it or not, I can probably get about six wraps between where that is and where my thread is. So that's where I'm gonna tie it off. But here's another tip. Put three big wraps right there. Now my thread is out of the way. And if I remember that I took three wraps, I'll be able to back them off at my tie-off point. Okay, I'm fine with that body. Now let's back this off three turns and I can catch it off right there. Now, if you've ever worked with ostrich hurl, you'll know it's tougher than peacock hurl. You can't just yank it back to break it off. You usually do have to trim it. Let's put a few extra wraps right here because with that black showing right there, you can probably see that under our pink body. So take a thread about, let's see, right there. It's gonna be, try to make it even parts with the hurl, the pink band, and then more hurl. I'm gonna go ahead and catch my pink band in up at the front of where I want it to be. And then I can take it down and back. So let's pull that back just a little bit right there. Okay, now that is about as wide as I'm gonna want my pink, maybe even a little bit shorter 
a little bit less wide than that. Okay, now I'm just gonna wrap it, try to keep it flat, wrap it down and back, and that might give us enough pink, but you'll have to judge it. You might need to take another layer. Okay, I think that is gonna give us enough pink. Remember that it will be a little bit translucent, but we have a white thread underneath it. So when it gets wet, it shouldn't turn into a, a really dark midsection here. Okay, now let's take our thread a little bit forward and catch in the other half of that ostrich hurl that we just used for the back. Okay, I think that's gonna be a good place to start our wraps. I don't really want all that right there, but okay, got my thread hanging where I want the front of this to be caught off. Let's just go ahead and wrap this. Another six wraps or so should probably work. Okay, I wasn't counting, but that's gonna be enough right there. Two wraps to secure that, and let's snip this excess. Now I'm gonna spend a few wraps right here to try and really smooth this out. It will make it easier for wrapping this hackle. And the hackle on this, it's just a white dry fly hackle. This is from a whiting high and dry. And it's a bronze grade, so it's not real high quality, but it's good enough. We can make a decent dry fly with that. So that's the catch in point I want right there. And what I like to do after I've stripped off enough bare stem I'm gonna strip a few extra fibers from the side that's gonna wrap opposite of me. That'll help that first wrap just to lay a little bit cleaner. So let's catch this in right here. Not real tight wraps. Going back just a little bit. Trying to keep, keep it, I guess, perpendicular to the hook right there. I'm gonna put a wrap behind it. And now, okay, that's gonna work. I'm going to, instead of snipping this off right here, I'm going to just lay my wraps down forward almost to the eye where I want to catch this off. Now I can snip off this stem and I won't have created a drop down right there. Still have a little bit of a nub, but we can bury that right back here behind our eye and we'll be just fine. Okay, so I'm putting my thread where I want to stop wrapping this white hackle. And I'm thinking I'll probably get five wraps. If we get five wraps, it will probably be hackled heavily enough. Okay, I think that is certainly enough. Let's go ahead and catch this off. I'm gonna have a few fibers going forward right there, but we'll be able to take care of those with our head or trim them. So if I can do this, I'm gonna pull everything back, not real far, but just enough to get me room for a whip finish here. I don't want a big head, it is a dry fly. Okay, I think that's enough room for the whip finish. And let's take a look, do we have any cleanup? Well, let's see if I can get these coming out perpendicular. I think I'm gonna be fine. Got room for a drop of head cement. Maybe I got a couple of these fibers pointing farther back than I want. But overall, I think we got a decent fishable fly. Drop of head cement and this thing's ready for the box. So that's it my friends, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.